Hi, I'm Nate Adams, CEO and co-founder of HVAC 2.0. Welcome back to the onboarding series, and we are talking about sweet spot thinking. So hopefully this S-curve is getting really, really familiar to you at this point, and it's beginning to kind of just sneak into your brain and think about what's, what's the point where doing more isn't worth it, but doing less doesn't probably get me what either I want or my client wants. So a uh, very important thought process to have on this. So this time we're going to be talking about homeowner education for uh, this topic. All right, so I just wanted to touch on HVAC 2.0 principles. Um, you should be starting to become very familiar as well. So TPIS, the process is sacred. Stay on track, stay in your lane. Be the guide, not the hero. Don't let your ego rule. Responsibly avoid responsibility by doing a good job of offering a decline. Finding the sweet spot, which is where we are here. Do no harm, the Hippocratic Oath. Represent HVAC 2.0 well to others, wherever you are, social media or out and about, and give more than you take. Um, I mean, the, the industry doesn't grow or get better without helping others and teaching others. So this is what this is all about. So please do so. All right. And then I always like to touch on the subway map. Here's where we are. So for homeowner education, we are really early in the process. So basically this is when the lead comes in, be it through the website, uh, through the phone, or through a service tech. Um, or if you have some other way, there's probably other ways too. But this is where the homeowner education really needs to happen. And this should be getting familiar as well at this point. There's three different types of intelligence. There's practical, creative, and analytical, and we want to be in the middle in the creative range. So we're, we're partway between the practical street smart and the analytical um, nerdy. So we want to be smart about what we do, but not getting stuck in analysis paralysis. Same thing applies to when we're doing homeowner education, because we don't want to educate them so much that they end up hitting analysis paralysis. Um, we want them to understand enough so that they are comfortable to make whatever decision that they want to make. All right, so here's how the S-curve works for this. So on the bottom, this is a really uneducated client, and on the top, this is a super educated client. Um, in this case, super educated isn't always good, which we're going to get to. I mean, as well, it's, it is overkill. Um, but it, it can be problematic. So we'll begin with no education. So you show up and they know nothing. Um, pretty common out there. And the, we'll, we'll get to what that means in just a few minutes. Next up is I read it on the internet. Oh, lordy. That could mean it's either really good. I mean, maybe they stumbled on Joe Stabrick and they actually understand some good things. But for the most part, the information that they're going to read is not going to be particularly helpful uh, to the sales process. What we have found, and this was <laughs> totally by freaking accident, the sweet spot is HVAC 101, which is the second chapter of my book, The Home Comfort Book. Um, what it does is it takes automotive HVAC, which everybody understands how it works intuitively. We, you know, Anybody who's been driving a car for a while knows how to keep themselves reasonably comfortable in it. So it compares the HVAC in a car to the HVAC in their house. And houses come up severely wanting, so there are six different things that HVAC should be able to do. All cars can do five. Most cars, or most houses can't do any, which is pretty bad. And once homeowners begin to understand that, they start to look for more. So the few things are load matching. So you can put out a little bit of heat or a little bit of cool, and you can match what the car needs for heating or cooling at any given moment. You have multiple fan speeds, so if you need to move a lot of heat, you turn it up, or a lot of cool, you turn it up. Otherwise, you run it low, and it's nice and quiet. Um, mixing is kind of putting it where you want or stirring it up. Good filtration is important. And you know, most cars have good cabin filters now. They also have the fresh air coming in, so fresh air is important. Dehumidification, which looks like the air conditioner button, so you can keep the house dry. And the only one that's not showing here is humidification, because uh, cars can't do that. But just by doing that little bit of education, all of a sudden, people's mindsets begin to flip. 
which we will come to again in just a moment. Next up, getting into overkill range, is Comfort 101. This is the first chapter of my book. This is basically uh, house physics for dummies, if you will. So it, uh, it assumes that you are reasonably intelligent, but you know nothing about building science, and it starts from there. And that chapter I wrote because I was frustrated. When I was trying to learn building science, everything was super high level, and there was no on-ramp. So everybody's talking in this crazy jargon, and I didn't know how to learn the jargon. Uh, so I wrote this chapter specifically to do this and my book in general does that uh, but it just gets a little too nerdy and then if you want to talk about ultimate uh, nerdiness there is green building advisors so uh, sorry guys um, you're serious nerds and this is coming from a nerd <laughs> uh, so but this is getting into overkill when it comes to client education so let's see what uh, client reactions are in general. So these are kind of the things you're going to hear from them. So if they are not educated, they do not understand that there are different levels of HVAC equipment. So they don't understand single stage, two stage, um, variable speed, and then variable speed communicating. They don't know that there's that range. So their reaction when you start telling them about this, if you don't educate them up front, is going to be, you're just trying to sell me something. And you're, you're much more likely to get a bad review by uh, pushing high-end equipment. And this is why a lot of people, frankly, don't sell any high-end equipment. Um, I mean, it's, it's fun watching lots of people in the 2.0 network. They go from every so often selling an inverter to only every so often selling single stage. And it's usually like a landlord. So, yeah, they want the budget model. Uh, it is what it is. Um, but it's amazing watching that flip. So the uh, I read it on the internet crowd. That's when you're going to get the, can you do this? Only cheaper. You know, they're going to come to you looking for one certain model or one certain type and then asking you to cut your price and not listening to you about the value of a good install, good filtration, you know, all the things that come with uh, a really well-installed piece of equipment. HVAC 101, this is where you're going to get, I want modulating equipment. I read about uh, how there's different types and how modulating equipment really helps. And so you're going to sell an inverter. Uh, you're going to sell a modulating furnace. So watch what happens with this. Comfort 101, you're going to start hearing, well, Nate says, that's annoying. <laughs> I've heard plenty of stories about this. Comfort 101, because it gets kind of into the weeds, it tends to over-educate people somewhat and it gets in the way. So that is only going to happen if you get to path C, which is the comprehensive planning process or CPP. So if, if their house is really screwed up, that's when you're going to send them Comfort 101. But don't send it to them now. And this should be a repeat because a, a whole lot of this stuff, the sweet spot is about what you want to do early in the process. And once you do this, then you can understand if you need to go any further or not, or if you just stop, if that's good enough. So it's an important concept. Um, if you aim for the sweet spot, you can do that. And th then and only then do you decide if you go any further. Now, uh, green building advisor, you're going to get, uh, I don't know how to do your job, but this blog says that you're doing it wrong. Um, so th those clients are going to tend to be so educated that they're going to be frustrating to work with. Um, <laughs> ask me how I know. <laughs> so uh, basically, if there is some weird mistake or some weird quirk to deal with, I have probably dealt with it through the projects that we've done. So that's one nice thing of having had boots on the ground, even if I don't do the work as much as I once did anymore. Uh, the odds are, if there's an error or something to learn, I've been there. Um, and if there's not, you all are going to help me. All right. So, I mentioned this at the beginning. We need to help homeowners play in the creative range as well. So if they go too analytical and they read too much Green Building Advisor, um, they're going to get stuck in analysis paralysis. If they're too practical, they'll just be like, ah, screw it, just put it in. Um, and if you don't offer to decline and it doesn't work, um, you're going to be liable to be on the hook. So you, you want to help them bridge those two and get into the creative mode. So you want them thinking like an engineer just as you think like an engineer.
Because remember, the prime directive of HVAC 2.0 is to provide excellent experiences for both contractors and homeowners. Doing one or the other is not that hard because you can kind of ignore what the other person needs. Um, but trying to do both is a really narrow path. So it's possible, but you have to pay attention. So when it comes to homeowners, we want to educate them baby bear style. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. And that again tends to look like HVAC 101. And this is what we found out because we used to send out HVAC 101 and Comfort 101. It's too much. You can't send somebody 80 pages of stuff to read and expect them to do it. Um, HVAC 101 is 16 pages. And it's pretty with lots of colors. So here's the first couple pages, and then you've seen this uh, already. And what you want to do with this, you don't have to be part of HVAC 2.0. So if you just go through the onboarding and you decide this isn't for you, you can still steal HVAC 101 and send it out to everybody. But it says where it comes from right here, a complimentary chapter of the Home Comfort Book. Um, so people know where this, this comes from. So you don't have to... Uh, say where it came from and you don't have to pay you can just use this but we have heard of very good luck putting this everywhere so your email footer um, on the bottom of invoices whenever you're going for a quote you know all of these different places that you could use it this should be going out uh, like a machine gun so uh, you should constantly be shooting this file out so very important send this to everybody and that is actually a short video, which is kind of nice. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. So this is how you apply sweet spot thinking to educating homeowners. So you want to teach them enough to be able to make a decision and a very good decision without teaching them so much that they hit analysis paralysis and then drive you uh, crazy not making a decision. So hope this was helpful. I will see you next time. And I'm Nate Adams. Bye-bye.